I have a short clip of a Talia support that I really want you guys to see. Try and figure out what elo this is coming from. She starts running towards mid and sees Fiddlesticks in river. After turning around slightly, she ends up just running right past him to go kill the enemy mid laner. So what elo do you think this is from? At first glance, you might think gold would be a decent guess. But what if I told you that this is actually Grandmaster? Talia ended up getting a kill that seemed almost impossible. It's like they just let her do it. But it's because she understood one key concept that her opponents did not. That concept is first move. In today's guide, we're going to be teaching you something that will let you smurf on even Grandmaster players, like you just saw. But before we get into the guide, here's a video of you trying to rank up without skill capped. <laughs> Don't worry, we can fix that at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Let's get right into it. I do want to say that Talia should have never gotten this kill here, but it might not be for the reason that you would expect. Initially, we really want to fault the fiddle for letting Talia walk to mid, but the real blame falls onto someone we haven't even seen yet, the enemy support. The whole reason why Talia is here in the first place is because of a terrible fight that happened just moments ago. The enemy ADC actually got a triple kill in a 2v3. She turned a gank and put the game in a terrible position for Talia's team. She had enough gold for a 3 minute noon quiver, and to add insult to injury even got to crash the wave for free, with absolutely zero risk of death on top of it. Now let's look at the minimap and ask an important question. Where do you think Rakan should be right now? Instead of going bot lane, Rakan should be running straight down mid lane, or out of his base gate into bot side jungle. Because Jinx was going to be able to crash the wave due to death timers, nothing is going to happen bottom for the foreseeable future. Until she recalls and comes back to lane to farm, we don't need to be here. There's just simply nothing we can hope to achieve in a potential 1v2. So why is this that bad, and why is Rakan to blame for the kill that Talia got mid? It's because of his lack of consideration for who had the first move. Let's explain exactly what that is. First move simply denotes who has the ability to get to a play first. If we think of a hypothetical situation where a dragon is being contested by two junglers, we can say that a support who has lane priority has the first move. If they both start running at the same time, one will just get there before the other. Their path is simply shorter and closer to the play. If we think about the Rakan example, we first need to ask what plays were even available that we should consider going to. We already know that going bot is really useless here, but given the game timer and the map state, we can easily figure out other ideas. The first that comes to mind is Bottom Crab. Fiddle has all bot side camps up, so it's likely he wants to go towards that side of the map anyways. Mid lane is winning extremely hard, but is pushing aggressively and harassing Kiana under tower to do it. So counter ganking this also makes a lot of sense. Basically, Rakan should have two main ideas now and realize that Talia also has very similar ideas. She would want to punish this overextension from Callista and also help her jungler secure a crab. Now, all that matters is who gets there first. Rakan actually died slightly before Talia in the fight, meaning that when he respawns, he's actually alive for 7 seconds that Talia isn't at all. While Talia does have her passive, there's no way that she would beat Rakan to mid or river if he were to go there immediately. Conveniently, something like this spot would also be right between Rakan's two ideas, and Talia would never be able to get to either one first because he claimed the space needed to get to them before she did. If a fight were to break out at either location, Rakan will always be a few seconds ahead, and those seconds can be absolutely crucial in swaying the fight. Looking at what actually happened, we'll see why this was such a huge issue. Rakan failed to recognize that mid lane was a potential play for both supports. And now, even though he's an equal distance to Crab, he's extremely far behind Talia when it comes to going towards mid. If he had thought about who would have first moved to mid lane and shifted his pathing from this to this, Talia would just die here. Three people would be able to collapse onto her, and suddenly, she's the one out of position. Instead, we have our mid lane being left out to dry. By moving just one piece around in a situation like this, you can completely turn the game on its head. And as a support, with all the freedom in the world to roam and move around the map, you often need to think about which plays you're able to get to before someone else, because it can make all the difference. 
This is why showing on map in a lane or walking on wards can be so punishing, because if the enemy support is good, they can figure out exactly which place to force when you can't get there in time. To look at just how small this window of time needs to be for good supports to take advantage of it, we can look at some challenger games. Some of you might recognize this replay from our recent video on roaming, but looking at it again through this lens that we have now, we can learn a lot. Here, Karma completed a roam towards mid lane, and while she doesn't get anything besides helping to fix Yasuo's wave, we do see the enemy support show on map. Karma now has first move over Nami for anything pertaining to bot lane, and even though it may just be a few seconds of difference between the two characters, she can always get to bot first, and now Nami can do nothing about it. This margin was incredibly narrow, but it's clear that a good player like this is able to abuse it very easily. In your own games, you can apply a very common tactic just like this. By roaming towards mid, you'll demand a response from the enemy team. Either their support will not come to match you, in which case the enemy mid should pay the price, or they will follow, albeit a few seconds later than you. You'll basically force them around the map, but they'll never be first to the play, and it can create opportunities like we saw Karma make in the previous clip. Our challenger expert Nick actually talked about this in one of his games. Listen in. So now my best option is since I have Mobis is to just uh, rotate around the map. Uh, what I can do is I can go mid, bait Nautilus mid, and then run bot. And since Aphelios has no cleanse, I can easily just run at him and flay him. He mentioned that because he has Mobis, that this kind of play is possible. The sheer existence of first move is why supports like to rush boots, and especially mobility boots. Any amount of time that you can gain over your opponents will just get you first to plays, and if they're constantly trying to chase you to them, you're going to come out ahead. They just can't make up that difference in time. This is what makes champions like Bard, Pike, and Tom especially scary. With their movement options, they can often just get to plays before you can, and it makes it incredibly hard to follow them. Even if you aren't planning on making huge roams or big plays, First move is still something that you need to be thinking about in the lane phase. If we watch a high elo recon player, we can see how he's thinking about what potential plays can happen across the map, and just stopping his opponents from moving first. This whole time, recon is playing on the right side of the lane and fighting for bush control, but watch how he completely changes this play pattern when we see a new idea pop up across the map. With Zed hovering for a counter gank mid and the enemy jungler posturing to gank it as well, Rakan knows he can't just let his opposing bot lane move first. If Aphelios and Yumi just get to run up river before us right now, this play could go absolutely terribly. So we have to do something that would shift the order in which everyone would arrive. Rakan moves from the right side of the lane to the left, and now if everyone were to run towards mid, our team will be the ones getting back up first. Even though this mid lane play is just a 2v2 and it probably would end before anyone gets there, we do have to think about the lane state afterwards. If Diana wasn't able to safely push in this wave, how would the game change for her? She wouldn't be able to get a good reset timer, and we would overall be pretty unhappy with the mid lane lane state, right? Luckily, Rakan is thinking about this, and he boxes out his opponents for as long as he possibly can to prevent anything from happening to Diana. He's basically running interference for his mid laner. Constantly thinking about what plays could break out, even during the lane, and changing your positioning to make sure you arrive before the enemy can just make your life so much easier. Supports in low elo often have the issue of taking forever to rotate to plays, and sometimes letting others move first. Of course, there are particularly egregious examples like this, where someone is just on the other side of the map entirely. But after this guide, you should know that it doesn't take a 30 second difference to be a big deal. Even one, two, or three seconds can change the outcome of a fight entirely. To recap, the two things that you need to do in your games are first, identify the potential plays on the map. Account for what your opponents might want to look for, and also what can be good for you. Second, think about who can get there first, so you can call off bad plays if you don't have first move, or if you can, manipulate it so that you will be the one showing up when your team needs you. So you might be asking yourself why go to skillcap.com to improve when I could just watch YouTube guides or play the game. Well, let me show you. Let's say you're a support who's struggling to climb the ladder. Not only would you get over 40 site exclusive courses for support, but maybe really what you've been struggling with is trading as support. Well, we got you covered with six different courses breaking down how to trade as a support player. 
Not only do we have the largest catalog of guides for League of Legends in the entire world with over 1500 videos to watch, but these are then curated by the top coaches and players into courses on every skill and topic you need to master in order to truly improve and climb the ladder. If all of this wasn't enough, we haven't even touched on our catalog of over 700 smurf commentaries, where a challenger expert shows you how to climb out of your rank and you're guaranteed to get any questions answered by them directly. Not to mention, we're the only service to offer a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to Skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. That's all for today. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next one.